Okay, chapter 14, Urban Forestry, let's go. Urban forests refer to trees and vegetation located in and around urban areas. These include trees along the streets, in parks, around schools and businesses, and even in residential yards. Rather than focusing strictly on what defines a city, it's more useful to think of urban forest as the green infrastructure where people live, work, learn, and play. Urban forestry involves the strategic planning and management of the entire urban forest. Arboriculture, by contrast, focuses on health and care of individual tree and woody plants. Both disciplines operate in public and private land and are essential for maintaining the health structure and function of trees in the city. And the aim of an urban forester is to improve the urban environment through responsible tree management. Their work includes risk management, long-term planning, and collaboration with other professionals such as urban planners, engineers, landscape architects, and arborists. In municipalities, urban foresters may hold job titles like city forester, municipal arborist, tree warden, or municipal tree officer. And as you can imagine, trees in urban areas provide wide-ranging benefits, environmental, economic, and social, but they also come with a cost, especially related to maintenance and risk. Trees can be tremendous assets when properly managed, but if they're neglected, they may become liabilities. The public's perception of trees' value is often influenced by education, culture, and personal experience. Trees improve air quality by absorbing pollutants and filtering particulates. They reduce stormwater runoff by intercepting rainfall, which helps to prevent flooding. Roots stabilize the soil, which helps with erosion. The shade from trees lowers local temperatures, which can protect infrastructure and improve comfort. Trees also support biodiversity and help mitigate and adapt to climate change through carbon sequestration and localized cooling and urban trees can significantly reduce energy costs by shading buildings and acting as windbreaks. Wood from removed trees can be repurposed into mulch or lumber. Property values are often increased in areas with lots of trees, which in turn benefits local tax revenue. Commercial areas with tree canopy attract more customers and increase spending. Trees also reduce damage to infrastructure and contribute to public health cost savings. And believe it or not, they can also foster community connection and can reduce aggression and crime in neighborhoods. Access to green spaces reduces stress, improves mood, and enhances cognitive function. Physically, they promote outdoor activity. Therapeutically, forest therapy is being used to treat anxiety and depression. Culturally, trees serve as living memorials and connect people to their heritage. But despite their benefits, some trees can negatively affect air quality. For example, certain species produce allergenic pollen that worsens respiratory conditions. Additionally, invasive tree species introduced in cities can displace native trees and disrupt ecosystems. Planting and maintaining trees requires investment. Irrigation, pruning, pest management, and risk assessments are on all ongoing costs. Trees may also damage infrastructure like sidewalks and utilities, resulting in repairs or lawsuits. Qualified staff are needed to ensure proper care and safety. And tree failure poses a safety risk to people and property. Visual obstructions from branches or trunks can create traffic hazards. Some trees produce litter, fruits, or sap that may be viewed as nuisances, depending on the context. These issues need to be managed carefully to maintain public support of the urban forest. Climate change is driven by rising levels of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. Trees help by absorbing CO2 through photosynthesis and storing it in their wood. This process called carbon sequestration mitigates climate change. However, when trees die or are removed, some of that carbon is released back. Urban forestry also supports climate adaptation by reducing heat and managing water. Urban foresters use valuation tools to quantify the benefits of trees and the estimate replacement or repair costs. Valuation considers environmental, economic, and social contributions. Appraisal is the formal process of assigning value, which is important for insurance, legal cases, and municipal planning. There are three main approaches to tree appraisal. The sales comparison approach, which looks at similar recent sales, the income approach, which calculates the present value of future benefits, 
and the cost approach, which estimates what it would cost to repair, replace, or reproduce the tree. Large trees are difficult to replace, so appraisal techniques like the trunk formula are used. This method multiplies nursery stock costs by the trunk area to estimate value. Other techniques consider species, size, condition, and location. The guide for plant appraisal by CTLA is widely used in North America. It's important to choose the most suitable method for each case and communicate it clearly. Urban forests contribute to city sustainability and resilience. Sustainability means long-term benefits can be maintained. Resilience means that the system can recover from stress. Urban forestry planning happens at three levels. At the policy level, long-term goals and tree preservation plans are established. At the tactical level, budgets, inventories, and programs are developed. At the operational level, fieldwork like planting, pruning, and removals are carried out. But to succeed, urban foresters must work with city planners, engineers, business owners, and residents. Each stakeholder has different priorities and uses different language. It's crucial to communicate clearly about space requirements for trees and to advocate for their value in policy and in practice. Urban foresters assess the health and extent of tree resources using two key tools, canopy cover assessments and tree inventories. These methods help guide planning, management, and strategic decision-making for urban forests. A canopy cover assessment measures the area of the ground covered by tree canopies. It's expressed as a percentage or total area and is typically done using satellite images or aerial photography. This tool is valuable for high-level planning, tracking goals, and identifying areas that lack canopy. A tree inventory records detailed information on individual trees or tree groups. It includes data like species, size, condition, and maintenance needs. Inventories are used for planning, budgeting, and understanding the structure and value of the urban forest. Modern assessments rely on GPS, drones, satellite data, and field observations. These tools enhance accuracy and efficiency. As technology improves, integrating multiple data sources provides a clearer picture of the urban forest. Urban forest management plans set goals and strategies for sustainable tree management. These plans span years or decades and include subplans for planting, maintenance, removals, and emergency response. Stakeholders should be involved in plan development with regular evaluation of progress. A risk management plan identifies procedures for spotting, reporting, and mitigating tree risks. This should include standards of care, assessment frequency, response protocols, and record-keeping methods. Funding strategies must also be considered. Regular maintenance is essential to reduce risk and extend tree benefits. Many cities use scheduled pruning cycles to stay ahead of emergencies. Maintenance may be done in-house or contracted out. Each offers pros and cons. Storms and disasters can severely impact urban forests. Urban foresters must plan, coordinate across departments, and respond quickly. Recovery efforts focus on treating damaged trees and replanting. Diversity in species, age, and size improves urban forest resilience. Planting too many of one species can increase vulnerability to pests. Mature trees provide high benefits while younger trees support succession. Biodiversity in trees supports wildlife and ecosystem health. Invasive species threaten urban forests. Urban foresters must work with specialists to detect, monitor, and manage pests. Public education and early warning systems are essential. Climate change and trade increase these risks. Tree removals create wood waste. Rather than sending it to landfills, wood can be reused as mulch, biofuel, or specialty wood products. Composting also provides nutrient-rich material for landscaping. Urban forests are habitats for birds, mammals, and insects. Foresters must consider wildlife laws like Migratory Bird Treaty Act and minimize the harm. Trees should be preserved and maintained in ways that support native wildlife. Urban foresters must work with governments, arborists, and community groups. Tree boards, volunteer groups, and outreach programs help build public support. Most trees grow on private land, so public education is critical for sustainable management.
Tree ordinances regulate planting, removal, and care. They protect trees and define responsibilities. Urban foresters help draft and enforce these rules to align with best practices. Some ordinances require permits or restrict certain actions like topping. Many cities require permits for planting, pruning, and developmental activities. Conditions may require ISA certification or best practices. Some areas have license requirements for companies. Some trees are protected by tree preservation orders. These orders, common in the UK and elsewhere, safeguard trees during development or restrict changes to important trees. Standards like the ANSI A300 guide tree care work. Specifications define how tasks should be done. Urban foresters must develop clear, detailed specifications for all aspects of tree work and ensure compliance whether work is internal or contracted. Additionally, the International Society of Arboriculture provides BMPs that translate standards into practical guidance. These cover planting, pruning, risk management, and more, and they help ensure consistent and high-quality care of the urban forest. Thanks again for watching. This is the end of Chapter 14. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.